Hello, we're at the magnificent Royal Albert Hall in London, where crowds are gathering for a very special evening. In a moment, Niall Rogers, multi-Grammy award-winning composer and producer, will be unveiling a brand new portrait. It's the prize commissioned by the Portrait Artist of the Year, Christabel Blackburn. And I can't wait to see Niall's reaction. Let's hope he doesn't freak out. <laughs> Over the last 10 weeks, artists have travelled from all over Britain and Ireland to compete for the chance to win this sensational £10,000 commission. Christabel Blackburn first impressed the judges at Battersea Arts Centre, where she won her heat with a striking portrait of actor Adrian Dunbar. What's surprising about Christabel's work is how economical it is, but it also gives you an insight into the sitter. That is magic. After making it through the semi-final, capturing the charisma of musical legend Elaine Page, Christabel went on to win her final challenge at the National Portrait Gallery with her painting of poet, playwright and broadcaster Lem Sisse and commission portrait of micro-sculptor Willard Wigan. You're thinking, wow, we're about to take Christabel into the art world and see where she goes over the next few years and I have absolute faith in her as an artist. Christabel's prize commission is to paint music legend Niall Rogers, who shot to fame with 70s disco band Chic and collaborated with everyone from David Bowie to Pharrell Williams, producing countless dance floor hits and selling over 500 million albums. Now we follow Christabel as she sketches, photographs, that's great. And paints while building a rapport with her celebrity sitter. You sound so much like me. Are you my sister? <laughs> <laughs> Receiving a surprise invitation. You're coming to my house in Connecticut. Right through to unveiling her finished portrait at the Royal Albert Hall. Christabel lives in southwest London with her husband Charlie and their three year old son Milo, who'll soon be joined by a younger sibling. I want to have a beak. You want to have a beak? Like a bird? Do you? Which one? Milo wants to have a beak. Finding out that I won was, it's kind of surreal. You don't really feel it at the time. The Sky Arts Portrait Artist of the Year 2020 is. Christabel Blackburn. I put my head in my hands and just didn't really uh, acknowledge what was going on until I took my hands away and then there were all the lights and the people and it sort of began to sink in a bit. The final was a five set nerve wracker. Um, there were so many sort of ebbs and flows, ups and downs. Winning this competition is a massive, massive deal. Any of those finalists could have won. I feel very lucky that it was me. Mind if I do a drawing of you? Just no. while you're sitting there. Go for it. <laughs> Taking part in this competition goes against all my natural instincts. I like to be quite private, not very good at being put on the spot. So I've, I think I've surprised myself in doing the competition and, and getting through it and actually enjoying it. <laughs> Looks like his head's come off and he's it does holding run. it. Christabel's worked so hard. It's been a lifetime ambition of hers to be an artist that is recognised. For her, it's immense. For us as a family, it's incredible. Milo hasn't got a clue what's going on. But I know one day he'll look back at this and I hope that he will realise that this was the start of something very special for her. Can you say chic? Chic. No Rogers. No Rogers. More than a musician, Niall Rogers' gift for songwriting, composing, arranging and record producing has made him the driving force behind a dizzying array of hits. 
He's had hits in every decade, but also worked with Madonna, Jackson, you know, you name them, right through to Duran Duran, Avicii. Diana Ross, David Bowie, NXS, Stevie Ray Vaughan, Pharrell, Daft Punk. So if somebody says to me, I don't know Nile Rodgers, who is he? I said, well, he's written the soundtrack to your life. I was reading his autobiography, and he's had such a fascinating life. I get the sense that he's probably a really nice guy, really easy to talk to, but still, because he's such a massive, massive star, I'm quite nervous. As if painting such a formidable sitter weren't enough, Christabel must also consider the historic location where her portrait will hang. And she's come to the Royal Albert Hall to meet its artistic and commercial director, Lucy Noble, to receive her brief. Big congratulations for Thanks. winning. How Thank do you feel you. about it? I'm still in shock, still pinching myself, and especially now that I'm here. We've had the most amazing and fabulous artists and musicians perform at the Royal Albert Hall, from Jimi Hendrix to Frank Sinatra, from ballet companies to opera companies, the proms. When artists walk up our steps and in through the doors to perform, it is quite a humbling and really special moment. You stand on that stage and it feels very intimate, very special as well. To have your portrait here, you'll stand amongst the greats, really. We want you to do what feels right for you. So if it's different and it's contemporary and different to what people might expect of the Royal Albert Hall, we're totally up for that. That's what we want. Opened by Queen Victoria in 1871, the Royal Albert Hall has been celebrating the arts with packed audiences ever since and Nile Rodgers is no stranger to this national treasure. He recently performed here for the Teenage Cancer Trust, a project close to his heart as a cancer survivor himself. He'll also be serving as one of the hall's artist ambassadors when it marks its 150th anniversary in 2021. It's incredible being here behind the scenes. I've got the piano tuning up for the next performance. It's quite inspiring, actually, to be here in this, in this space. There's this sense of history and uh, awe-inspiring, monumental, beautiful building in front of you. And when I'm back in my studio and thinking about the painting and the composition, I'm going to go back to this moment and think about that gravitas and try and bring that through into the painting. Before any formal sitting, Niall has invited Christabel to meet him for the first time backstage at London's Royal Festival Hall. As well as curating the South Bank's Meltdown Festival here, tonight he's doing a live podcast with his manager, Merck Mercuriadis. I'm beyond excited to be painting Niall Rogers. I'm not sure how the final portrait is going to work out yet, how I'm going to do the composition. I'm going to see how tonight goes, see how he stands, how he sits. I've got to do him justice. Hi, Hi. how are you? It's very, very good to meet you. Absolutely. Thank pleasure. you for meeting with me. Oh, my pleasure. You look amazing. Oh, come on. <laughs> thank you. This, this is great. I love it. Oh, thank you. Actually, my dog passed away, and it's my dog's oh, collar. It's funny, gosh. I was at this very exclusive party that we were performing at, and I had this on, and everybody was going, oh my God, that's so beautiful. Jesus Christ, uh, how much does that cost? I was like, well, <laughs> it's actually my dog. Yeah, <laughs> His face is gonna be a great one to paint. I mean, he's got all that history just written across it, all that music, his music's so happy. Please give the warmest of South Bank welcomes to Niall Rogers and Merck Mercuriadis. When I'm sitting there sketching him tonight, I'd like to get uh, his body language and his movement and all of that. I think that's going to really help inform the portrait. We try and have double entendre. We want it to be confusing. Even people who are in chic sometimes sing the wrong lyric. I had a girl in the band for a while. She would sing, just come on down to the fifth floor. <laughs> No matter what the medium is, I'm always trying to write music that touches your soul. And I think that Pound for Pound, the Sister Sledge album, may be the best record we've ever done. It was 
great seeing Niall on stage in action. You know, he's so cool and he's such a natural raconteur performer. Hi. Would you like to come and see? Oh my God, what you Some sketched? of the scribbles. Oh, cool. I so totally it was a little bit dark in there, so it's, um, it's, it's, it's very sketchy. And you can see it's like mainly like about body pump. language. So you always sit with your knee up like this. Yeah, um, I wonder why. You use your hands a lot when you're talking. Something like this makes me feel really cool because just by having the guitar behind me feels okay. like it's sort of so like that's great for me because now of who I can I am. think. Because people always say, God, you play the guitar like it's like it's an Another attached limb. appendage. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I just say, well, I just feel comfortable with it in my hands. So I think we need to put the guitar in I, the I, final I, painting. Maybe. It just, that just looks cool. I've never painted a guitar before, but uh, it'll be a challenge. And uh, I'm really looking forward to our sessions. And it'll be much more intimate. And I think I'm going to learn some really interesting stuff about him. Portrait Artist of the Year, Christabel Blackburn, has a three-year-old son, a new baby on the way, and a £10,000 commission portrait of Niall Rogers to complete. And like many who have to juggle work and family commitments, she's learned to manage her time efficiently. Since Milo was born, I've had a lot less time to paint. So I, I manage to paint three days a week. Nine o'clock I'm in and then 5.30 I leave. You start painting with your hands? As I know I've only got those three days, I means that I really make the most of it. I think also having had a, a child, you do get that sort of post-baby crisis where you think, oh God, I haven't done everything I wanted to do in my career before having a child. But now I've got this balance which works really nicely. One creative project demanding Christabel's immediate attention is a series of paintings for her forthcoming exhibition at London's Alex Eagle Studio. I probably knew about the exhibition a year ago, but I work right up to the last minute. It's just how I do it. It gives me a point of focus. In a way, the pressure of the heats and having that four-hour time restriction and an audience and all of that is... I think quite good for a painter because you have to perform, you can't procrastinate. And for me, that works really well. It's rare that I'll paint a portrait in four hours. It's quite, it's quite difficult to do. This one was a four hour portrait of my husband, Charlie, and he very kindly sat for me as practice for the competition. But I like the immediacy of the marks and how it's kind of unfinished. I mean, it's, it's not, it's him, but it's, it, it's not my best representation of, of, of him. His jaw is a little bit wide and his hands are a bit unfinished, but maybe I'll go back to it one day. Christabel first took part in the competition in 2018 when she painted actor Mira Sayal. I didn't feel confident at all throughout the time I was painting her. And I think it was because at the time I wasn't in such a confident place in my work. I was trying to do something that might please the judges rather than just sticking to what I would have done normally at home. I think that's something I've learned in this competition is that you've got to stay true to yourself. You can't paint for other people. Painting portraits is a very different thing to the other work that I do, which is painting strangers effectively. So this is a series of works and they are just um, my kind of observations really from my people watching out and about in London. I sort of follow people around a bit and look for characters that have got something about them. So this guy with his hat and his walking stick, he was a great character. And then this guy with his afro and his raincoat just looked really cool. And then the three of them together in that space caught my attention as a good composition. I just like to extract that essence and get that down. And I just don't think you need anything else. But a portrait is a chance for Christabel to go beyond outward appearances, and she's hoping her next sitting will provide an opportunity to get to know Niall better. 
I just can't wait to talk to him and get all of those stories that I know are in there and to find the real, the real Niall. These days, Niall divides his time between New York and London. And for today's sitting, he's meeting Christabel at the world-famous Abbey Road Studios, where he's been chief creative advisor since 2017, working closely with managing director Isabel Garvey. The way Niall works at Abbey Road, it's a joy to watch. He builds real connections with people, and that's how they develop such amazing music together and a great rapport. There's a really positive energy when he's in the building. I've been here at Abbey Road for more than a year. I was looking for a new sort of headquarters. Everything in the universe just sort of came together. Next thing you know, I'm sitting here at Abbey Road almost every day making new projects and uh, nurturing lots of young new talent. Budding music producers, eager to follow in the footsteps of people like Niall, are mentored at the Abbey Road Institute next door. And Christabel has chosen to paint Niall on its rooftop to make the most of the natural light. I think it's going to be the perfect setting for our sitting, and hopefully he'll feel really comfortable in this environment. So in my mind at the moment, my painting of Niall is him standing with a completely plain background and just up front and in your face, Niall, full length, with his guitar. We had a great connection, I think, when we first met. She was cool. She was analytical, but playful. She seemed like my kind of person. Like, if we were just hanging out, we'd be fine. If Christabel could show me a side of myself that I may not recognize, that would be amazing. Hello. Hey. hey. What's up? How How's it you? going? <laughs> nice to see <laughs> Good you. Good to see you again. I say welcome, but this is your... My I'm, home. I'm in your home. I know. I'm thrilled to be here. I'm glad to see you're wearing the, the dog collar again. I love it. I never take it off. So do I feel underdressed? I mean, I'm... I, I, it's I, up to I you. I just came like me. But that's exactly how we want you. You, okay. not stage Nile. We want real Nile. You don't want the stately Nile. Stately, no, real. Well, Albert Hall, it's like <laughs> so hardcore. It's like... Christabel has important decisions to make about scale and composition, and taking a series of photographs will help her to explore all the options. That's great. <laughs> I love it, the Royal Albert Hall. <laughs> My portrait to hang in the Royal Albert Hall. I mean, these are things that, as a child, uh, I, didn't, I couldn't even comprehend. I mean, it was something you never even think about. As a matter of fact, when they explained it to me, I went, they do that? <laughs> I, it, that's a thing? That does look cool, but when you go in tighter... That's more you. That seems more powerful. But I am wearing something that's quite casual. Well, I mean, There's I don't something... know. I'm not sure what the plan is, whether we're having another sitting. If we did, you could wear something more formal. Yeah, if yeah, you wanted yeah. to, like, dress it up. Well, we bit. are, we are. Do, does she not know? No. You're no. coming to my house in Connecticut, and, and it's on the water, and it's great, and it's amazing. Oh, my and God! It's, it's, yeah. It's... Oh, wow, thank you. Oh, my gosh, I'm a bit overwhelmed. With the added comfort of knowing that she can study the full figure at the next sitting, Christabel can use today's session to focus on Niall's face. So now I'm just going to chat and sort of paint. I mean, right. I don't know how Understood. it could turn out anyway. It could be great or it could be, could be just sort of colours all splodged on the... This is like in the music business. This is us writing demos. Is that what it would be like? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's like the start of a project. We go in and we have just a, a fragment of an idea and the next thing you know, it's let's dance. He's got a really, really good face to paint because he's got the hat, the glasses, and that kind of anchors things to start with. From a painter's point of view, that's quite handy. What's your process? How do you see the artistic process? How do you... I come from quite an artistic family. One side's music, one side's art and fashion. So my mum's a fashion designer. Uh, well, she I'm digging would... her already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're way cooler than me, my family. So if I came home from school, we'd sit and have 
art class as like our thing to, right. to do. And mainly it was drawing was the way I started. And um, I've just always had a fascination with people. I'm just a crazy people watcher. I like to just sit and watch people go by and I just zone in on those people and I get are right you, in and I wonder you, who they are. Are and you my doing. sister? Ah, yay! <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so I'm reading your book at the moment. Mm -hmm. I'm halfway through and I'm really enjoying it. Oh, it's thank so you. It's so beautifully written. I find it so incredible how much you've been through in your life and you're just such a cool, chilled out guy. I'm a two time cancer survivor and. Um, I didn't know it was two times. Yeah, it was a year, a year and a wow, half that ago. Is, that's fresh. Did you go through a lot with that recovery? Were you in hospital for a long time no, recovering? No, 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 no. I um, got surgery. If thine eyes offend thee, cut them out. <laughs> so I just said, cut it out, doc, and let's see what happens. Painting portraits is an intense process because you're one on one with someone. And people tend to really open up. It's like they're in a therapist's room. It's something about the environment, I think, that people feel that they can really talk. My parents were the type of people who would easily go to a nudist colony or things like that. They weren't uptight at all. But they were bohemian, weren't extremely, they? Extremely, extremely so. I mean, they were just the hippest of the hip. My mom, she was doing the whole Twiggy thing in America yeah. where not many black women were doing that. So my mom had an afro and super mini skirts and things like that. And they would be yellow and pink and iridescent colors. You know, so my mom would have friends like Thelonious Monk and wow. Sidney Poitier proposed marriage to my mom three oh my times. God. I mean, come on, that could have been my stepfather. He's just so easy to talk to. That's great for me, because then I can just listen and paint. He's had such an interesting life and known so many famous, incredible people, yet he makes you feel completely at ease. Madonna said to me, well, now, you should wear your hair in dreadlocks like Jean-Michel oh, Basquiat. Yeah. I'm like, OK. OK, Madonna. <laughs> OK, Madonna. <laughs> I mean, you have been friends with some of the most famous people. Yeah, Jean-Michel. Um, David Bowie. David, Andy Warhol. Bowie was the one that allowed me to do it on my own. I thought of Bowie as this absolute super genius. Right after David, I had a string of great rock and roll successes, and Bowie was the catalyst. I think I've got what I need for now. OK. Would you like to see it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either. I don't know. OK. There we go. <laughs> OK, that's cool. Niall Rogers said my painting was cool. <laughs> that's actually really cool. If I had just seen that and I didn't know it was me and I was commenting on it, and I would say, well, what do you think about this guy? I'd say, well, he's got a certain sense of fashion. He feels comfortable in his own skin. Yes. Um, doesn't really care about what other people think about him, but that's bullshit. He does care. That's me. I really do like that a lot. Thank you so Thank you. much. Thank you for giving me your time. Thank and you. And for chatting to me. I couldn't believe it when Niall invited me to his house in Connecticut. I never thought that he'd even let me have another sitting with him, because I know he's so busy. So this is just a massive bonus. But before her trip to the USA, Christabel must focus on the opening night of her exhibition. The run-up to an exhibition is always really nerve-wracking, but now that it's here, I'm just really looking forward to it. I'm just going to enjoy it. Christabel has been supported by this Soho gallery ever since its owner, Alex Eagle, fell in love with the way she paints. There's something about her work that I just find really unique. It's kind of super contemporary, super fresh, but a kind of really great take on portraiture. She catches posture. She catches the demeanor of people with the tiny stroke of a brush, with the most simple means, and with 
in extraordinary accuracy. It's always great when you have positive feedback for your work because it spurs you on, it gives you an idea of what people respond to. So tonight is a good night for me. Having this out of the way means that my next sitting with Niall is going to be number one. And it's all I'm going to be thinking about and um, it's going to be a relief because I don't have to think about this anymore and, and I can just fully concentrate on, on that. Christabel is heading off to Connecticut where she's been invited to join Niall Rogers at his home for their final sitting. Bye. Have a safe mm. flight. If someone had told me six months ago that I would be on my way to Connecticut to Nile Rogers' house to paint his portrait, I would have not believed them. It feels very surreal. I hope the fact that he's invited me to his house means that there was a bit of a connection between us and that we got on quite well. I'm hoping the advantage of being here will somehow almost subconsciously inform my portrait. Just having that essence of who he is, where he comes from. Someone with more of an insight than most into Niall's true character is his life partner of over 20 years, Nancy Hunt. I really hope and I have great faith in Christabel to capture his positivity and his happiness and his just, this glow about him. He's funny, he's kind, he's generous, he's vulnerable, he's all of those things. He was born on this planet to give us music and to make us happy. That is who he is. For Niall to have his portrait hung at the Royal Albert Hall, it means that he made a dent in this world in a way that was very important to him. Now that we're sort of on my turf and she's coming to my house, oh my God, how are you? <laughs> Hi. I think that having her capture me here, it's going to be a reflection of the me that people don't usually see. I love what you're wearing. Is, that, is this going to be what? what we're going to have I in the think painting. think so. I think Great. so. Yeah, it's ideal. Because it's black and white, and then we can do something funky with the color in the background. It's perfect for me cool. as well. Well, I love your work, and I wanted to give you some patterns Some pattern. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> so come on in. Thank Let's you. Go in and check out the crib. The crib. You got it. Let's head up to the studio, so you can see where I spend most of my life. Wow. Um, when uh, records do well, they give you gold and platinum records. Some of these records were, you know, did extraordinarily well. It's Le Freak, the biggest selling single in the history of Atlantic Records. I don't even know what we're up to now, but it's huge. Niall bought this house when he was just 27 years old, and some of his biggest hits owe their existence to the hours spent here in his studio. This is uh, where I do most of my work. Um, if I'm not at Abbey Road, this is where I am. <laughs> You've got to tell me about this. Um, so every year, Billboard magazine would rate the producers who had the most charted singles, the greatest impact as well. That year, simultaneously, I had the number one record, the number two record, and the number three record. Um, and I don't, even the Beatles haven't done that. Having multiple sittings with your subject means you might capture something on one day that you didn't get on another day. That little subtlety, that twinkle in their eye that they might have. I don't think that many people get to see him in his home, to see where he relaxes and works. During this process, there might be moments when I just kind of go quiet. OK, where you go quiet or you say to me, quiet. Well, where we both <laughs> fall silent naturally, mm -hmm. then I might use that time to just paint right. you while you're still and not animated. Got it. So is that your way of requesting me to be still more than chatty? No, okay. it's not. It really isn't, because we need to <laughs> chat as well.
What was your thought process when you decided to enter this competition? And, you, you know, what, what were you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of a, tr a tradition in not just, not just art, I suppose, many things to enter competitions as a way of progression and learning and getting yourself out there and getting yourself known. I've certainly learned a lot about myself in that sense. I'm kind of an introvert. I'm kind of someone who likes to be behind the yeah, scenes. I get it. So any sort of attention, praise or anything like that, I don't take that well. Which sort of similar, the reason why I concentrated on composing and production was because you know, it's something I could do behind the scenes. Basically, I was terrified of people. When you see any of our early interviews, I rarely speak. I would have been pretty happy to be able to play with my back to the audience. Niall is a lot more relaxed now that we're in Connecticut. I think I saw a different side to him. He's actually a little bit shy. Um, I don't know how much he actually loves being on stage. So it was nice to see that vulnerability in that side of him. He's not a natural extrovert, although he's incredible on stage and no one would really know that. I'd love to have been a fly on the wall with your work with Madonna. Just the way that you talked about her in your book, it sounded like you guys just yeah. got on really well and were amazing. really good friends. So if I was a fly on the wall, what would I see? What would that be like? And before you answer that, could you possibly switch your legs to how they were at the beginning? <laughs> this, Sorry. Yeah, sorry about that. I, and then I wherever forgot. your hands <laughs> rest naturally. <laughs> um, every record I work on, I try and make the session fun. If we're not laughing and joking, I'm not producing. So Madonna, you would have seen us having so much fun, cracking jokes, but she was a workhorse. She was really disciplined. No matter how many times I would ask her to sing something, she would do it without any hesitation. You know, there was no ego, like there was nothing mm. like that. Yeah, it was great, we had a blast. But Diana Ross was the first star I ever worked with. What happened was one night I went out to a, a club called the Gigi Barnum Room, which was basically uh, a trans club. And when I went to the bathroom, I noticed on either side of me were all these Diana Ross impersonators. And I thought to myself, wow, how amazing is this? The gay community held Diana Ross in really high regard. <laughs> so we wrote a song that said, I'm coming out. And Diana Ross sang, I'm coming out. How's it coming? How's it coming along? Um, I think it's good. I, I, I wanted to capture your, the way that you're sitting because mm -hmm. um, it says so much <laughs> about your character and I think I've got that. I think the way that I, I got it angled and I'm sitting, perhaps your head looks a little bit big, but <laughs> I won't know that until I go and stand over there. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think I'm almost... Almost My head done. looks a little big, huh? Okay. <laughs> I don't, I think it's because I need to just put your hair in quickly behind. I could, I could pull my hair. Ah, oh, <laughs> it's too late for that. Oh, okay. <laughs> it take too long to paint it all in. Okay, ready. Oh, that's cool. I'm really digging that. Yeah, that's cool. It's a composition study, so when I do your big painting, I need to get some ideas of whether you're going to be seated or standing or close up. So you like it? I love it. I think it's really cool. I actually found a bit of a kinship there with him because I much prefer being behind the scenes. And But I think we're both quite introverted yeah. in that sense, and he certainly had to find that extrovert side of him throughout his life. I definitely want to try and capture some of that in the painting. I really like her personality. I find the similarities between she and myself to be uh, actually pretty extraordinary. 
it was actually really surreal going to Connecticut to see Niall, to just be there for 24 hours. The longer I spent with him, the more he relaxed and we chatted a lot. Very helpful for the painting. Since I came back from Connecticut, I have been umming and ahhing as to whether to do Niall's portrait full figure or to kind of go closer in to crop it. My aim with this portrait really is to convey that side of Niall Rogers that no one else is going to see, apart from people that know him very well. That more subtle, vulnerable side to Niall. This point where you're about to start a painting is actually quite nerve-wracking because you just want to make sure you make the right decisions. If you just make one wrong decision, you can end up having to cut down your canvas or start again. You have to really trust in yourself. I'm pretty much always unsure, kind of up until the last minute, I think, on the finer points. You know, exactly where am I going to crop the picture? Exactly what kind of colour is going to go in the background? I don't want it to just look like a copy of a photograph that anyone could have taken. Now I've got an image conjuring in my mind. So now I have to pull it out of the bag and do it justice. The portrait is finished, and the day of the unveiling at London's Royal Albert Hall has finally arrived. Our winning artist, Christabel Blackburn, is about to discover if her £10,000 painting of Nile Rogers will prove a hit. I'm kind of buzzing to be here. You know, Nile's going to see the painting. I really hope he likes it. I'm not going to lie, I'm quite nervous about that, because it's, you know, a big deal, and I want to do everyone proud, and I want to do him justice. I'm so lucky to have such a supportive family and they're all here. There's also one extra person here, little Mary. She's about five weeks old now, so it's pretty amazing to have her in tow as well as little Milo. Christabel was a great winner because of her style. She's got this very cool pop art way of painting with bright colours, clean edges, and I'm just thinking, you know, you could almost say it was quite chic, the way she paints. And Niall and chic are just, I mean, what a marriage. It's made in heaven. Christabel's subject, world-renowned musician and producer Niall Rogers, has arrived with his life partner, Nancy Hunt, to see the portrait for the first time. I've never sat for a painting. All of the other portraits that have been done of me have been done from photographs. We got along right from the moment we met. I really liked her. We've given Christabel an extraordinary opportunity, but we've also given her a lot of pressure. It's the Royal Albert Hall. It's Niall Rogers. This is a really big deal. It's a, it's a kind of make-or-break painting, really. Hey, Niall. Hi, Stephen. How, how are you, you Stephen? Doing? Pleasure. And nice, nice to see you. And you. Looking great. Looking how are great you? here. Oh, please, this old thing. <laughs> <laughs> how was the process of sitting for a portrait? Um, interesting. I not used to just sitting still. I'm always doing something, so... A good sitter, Christopher? He was very good, very good. <laughs> Sat still, but, but, but talked at the same time, so yeah. I could get to know you at the same time. So who's the more nervous? I'm definitely anxious. I want to make sure that you like it, and I do everyone proud. Right, well, I can't wait any longer, so I think we should unveil Christopher Blackburn, your prize commission for winning Portrait Artist of the Year. Will you give me a hand, Niall? Oh, I get to do it myself? Let's do it. Let's do it together. Okay. Here we go. Ready? Here we yeah. go. Oh, oh, cool. I love it. I truly love it. Isn't it great? How interesting this is. The figure being central and the instrument being set aside. It's emblematic, isn't it? Well, there were many, many guitars in the room, and I think it was sort of not to make the other guitars jealous. <laughs> <laughs>
That is the main guitar. That's called the Hitmaker. It's played on like a billion dollars worth of music. Well, it speaks a lot to your career. It's wonderful. Yeah, and what was interesting is that the trousers are African Dutch wax. I wanted the trousers. I want the trousers. Yeah. <laughs> Those are amazing trousers. And also, it's so clean, the rest of it, is that so that the trousers have their moment. Right. Trousers definitely yeah. got their moment. Right. Well, style is so much a part of you, and so is, is music, so that's why I kind of went for the whole figure, as opposed to just a face. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think another round of applause for Christabel Blackburn. <laughs> When the cloth came down, well, it was just so nice to have a big applause and for Niall's face to light up and for him to say that he liked it, that just meant everything. It's remarkable. It's a really sophisticated painting. It's very cool. It's the Christabel that we know, but turned up a notch. You know, she's really risen to the occasion. It's very stark and it's on the edge of symbol and realism. It's almost like an emblem of him and it's just very powerful in that way, which has come good, really good. I think there's no question at all. I think Christopher's going to have a long queue of people yeah. waiting to commission her. I think she might be my favourite ever winner of Portrait. I think this is a really, really great artist. Wow. I didn't know what I was expecting, but when it unveiled, it was just beautiful. His hands especially, she got so right. If I didn't see the rest of the painting, but I saw the hands, I would have known it was him. She's clearly very talented, and of course, everyone always needs a catalyst, right? So hopefully this is her catalyst. When she looks back on this painting of Nile, she can say, it went to another level from that moment. We'd be very proud of that. I'm absolutely thrilled with the portrait. I've been waiting to see what it looks like, and it's absolutely fantastic. It's going to hang right by our stage door, so all these legendary, famous artists are going to see this portrait of Nile Rogers. It deserves that place, because it's absolutely fabulous. I'm completely blown away by Christabel's achievements. I love the fact that she's sleeping, Holland. Yeah, I love that fact, too. I bet you do. <laughs> it's a cliche to say that the last nine months have been a journey. Christabel winning this competition, and Mary arriving in our lives, too. I couldn't be more proud. It's wonderful. It really I is. Like it. I think it's amazing. I want it. <laughs> I'm rarely the person sitting there and someone else is directing me, so it was great. And she's really cool. I think she's going to be fantastic. I think she's going to be one of our art superstars. I wind up commissioning her. It's, it's really great. Flatness, and it's, it's cool, like he is. I just feel like elated and sort of buzzing. The fact that Niall really liked it, so happy. I love the way it's paired back. Yeah. Really like that. So Niall sort of is so present. I've always struggled with, you know, confidence in my abilities to paint. And I think this process has really helped me and given me that validation and having people say that they love my work. Can I get you to do another one? Yeah, I'd love that. That'd be cool. I'd really like I love it. I really love it. Niall just said, can I have it? And sadly, he can't, but it's really exciting. He wants me to potentially do something for him. I mean, that's just the biggest accolade of all, isn't it?